I was never a sewer. I taught myself to sew. I never did any of that when I was a kid. And actually, I, I pride myself in kind of, I wouldn't say bad sewing, but since I taught myself, I don't really know the rules. So I'm just doing my own thing, making it up as I go along. I was trained as a painter because I love color. I'm a real colorist, and I've always been kind of into fashion, too. I really love textures and materials. I think it's not even the clothes themselves. It was the materials and the different textures and the way they work together that really intrigued me. I stopped painting, basically, because I realized that what I was getting at wasn't really something that I could do with paint, or that it was much more immediate to do with other materials. I started using these really sheer fabrics and other actual objects and just, I went into this whole more sculptural realm. Like, was it a sculpture? Was it a painting? A lot of artists have taken up cloth and materials and brought them into the fine art realm. But when I started doing it, it wasn't really done. It made a lot of sense to me and what I was trying to get at. It gendered the project in a way that was interesting to me and somehow elevating the status of these materials into the white cube, into the gallery, was powerful for me. It was a powerful metaphor for, you know, being a woman in what is still, unfortunately, a man's world. I was such a tomboy as a kid. I was very into sports. I never sewed, and I never, I looked down on sewing too, which was interesting, because it was just, you know, woman's stuff. I really wanted to compete with the guys, and I was like in the debate club, and model congress, and all of that type of thing. So here I am, you know, finally enough of a feminist to embrace my femininity. The materials are from my grandmother. These are her linens, napkins, and tablecloths that she used on her table in Brooklyn. They were being stored in my aunt's house in New Jersey with a bunch of my stuff. There was one time I was going back east and I was taking back a bunch more of my stuff to California and I found these linens. I was initially attracted to them because they were stained. And they were in my aunt's basement when there was a bit of a flood. So there were these beautiful table linens, but yet they had these markings on them. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to take these into my studio and do something with them. I took them back to my studio where they stayed for years and years and years while I kind of considered what could happen. And then one day I decided, OK, this is what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to sew them together and I'm going to stretch them. I'm going to present the stains on the wall, you know, as paintings. They became paintings for me. It was then that the meaning of the material really charged me. I was approached by Ala to come and take a look at the collection and possibly do a project with the magnets because she knew that I worked with textiles and the magnets has this amazing textile collection. My idea was to try to stir things up a little bit and uh, let the artists use the collection in the, in the way in which they could learn something and you know, become familiar with it and own it and, and feel like they, they can sort of use it somehow in their life or in their art, uh, which may be at this point so you know, different. It's maybe conceptual, it may be radical, experimental, avant-garde art that never even crossed paths with, um, with any kind of J Jewish cultural landscape. But you know, what would it be for them to go into the sanctorum and try to um, play a little bit with these objects? The most interesting piece was this kiddish festival cloth that was just unbelievable because it was used as a tablecloth. So of course, I was very excited about that because I was already working with my grandmother's table linens and the idea of the table as a space for community and discourse and sharing and conversation and a place for people to get together and really make something special happen was already something that I'd been working with 
for many years. It also was just aesthetically mind-blowing for me. It tapped into a lot of my aesthetic interests. It's embroidered, it has a saying on it, a proverb. The figures themselves are so delightful and folky and just um, whimsical and there's lots of birds and animals and lions and things that have been interesting to me over the years. And it's 250 years old, which is just incredible, the sense of history that it holds with it. This, this says Adam and this says Eve. And there are these incredible stains on it, which of course connected to me with the stains that I was working on. And that it was created probably in Germany, and that it traveled from Germany to San Francisco. The linens that I'm using traveled far as well. I think most of them were made in China, and they made their way to my grandmother's table in Brooklyn, and then they've since come over to my studio in San Francisco. So it just was like this magical moment when everything came together. Place and memory and travel and history, there's a sense of all of that, I think, that these cloths carry with them. What Amy does is she recycles a lot of it. And one of the, um, of course, goals of the revisions um, series is, is to be able to recontextualize, right? It's, it's you take an existing object that's used in a particular context, be it you know, ceremonial objects of uh, Jewish practice, or be they um, other kind of remnants of uh, the history of Jewish communities, and you kind of try to rethink them, revise them, recontextualize them, reposition them, sort of bring them close the, to you and to contemporary life. This cloth is going to be my, I wouldn't say answer, but my um, response to the Kiddush cloth, the festival Kiddush cloth of the museum collection. Um, it's really, it's got these amazing stains and even has um, a hole like the festival Kiddush cloth has one, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle that, whether I'm going to leave it as is. I might make a patch for it like the festival cloth has a, has a patch, so that might even be a more, um, more of a parallel there, so we'll see. The next step for this, I'll iron it, and then I'll stretch it over the stretcher bars. The drawings were kind of done for me. They're like found drawings. They're found works. And it was the meaning of the stains themselves that really were intriguing. It's like, well, where did the stain come from? I mean, some of the stains are from that flood in my aunt's basement, but not all of them. A lot of these stains come from their use on my grandmother's table, which was a really interesting idea for me to think about. Like, who made that stain? Was that red wine? Was that gravy? Was that simis? You know, I mean, what holiday was that for? What makes this object special is not uh, the way that we, they were made, but the way in which they were used, where they were used. And the stain that's left in this object is sort of it becomes this indexical mark that represents that, that use, you know, that memory. So I was, became very interested in the way in which Amy uses them as sort of these blank canvases, or that's almost very, very minimal paintings, in which this very subtle sort of remnants of this memory is represented as a crease, a fold, right, a kind of a stain or a mark, and then when they're stretched and reworked a little bit and put on the wall, that's their aesthetic value, they become memory paintings. These tablecloths or napkins or whatnot become much more meaningful to me because of my connection to my grandmother and then I think that connection or that meaning translates to the viewer or to the work itself. Somehow it gets infused with this other level of meaning. Here I am, I'm taking her materials and putting them on the gallery wall. To me, that was kind of a symbolic act of honoring her or making something with her memory. <laughs>